For those wanting to dive into the airbrush stuff, use the code awesomejob at webairbrushes.com to get 40% off your entire order. Welcome to how to paint a Death Skull's orc knob. Here's your paint list. After priming the model with Steinol Res Gray Primer and allowed to completely dry, we base coat the skin with Goblin Green. The first shadows are made with a one-to-one -one mix of scarlet red and goblin green. We will spray these from under the model to catch those bottom surfaces. I wasn't completely happy with the shadows, so I decided to use pure scarlet red thinned, six parts water to one drop of paint. This made the shadows a bit darker. Using Elf Skin Tone, also thin six parts water to one part paint, I paint in the highlights. I thought the base got washed out by the highlights and shadows, so I decided to make a 6 to 1 mix of Goblin Green. This is thin enough to let the shadows and highlights show through and pulls the colors together. Death Skulls put paint on their skin, so I decided to use Crackle Medium so that their war paint would crack, kind of like the guys in Braveheart. Once the medium is almost dry but still tacky, I apply the blue war paint using magic blue. Well, the crackle medium didn't work like I hoped it would, so I break up the blue war paint using goblin green. This makes it look like the paint is being rubbed off in some areas. Our first highlight is a one-to-one -one mix of elf skin tone and goblin green.
the inside of the mouth is painted with elf skin tone. Once dry, I applied Ghost Tint Fresh Blood to the mouth. While we wait for the Ghost Tint to dry, we can base coat the pants and the shirt with khaki. The first shadow on the khaki areas is sepia shade. You can cover three quarters of the area if needed. Now, the second shadow using blue shade. This color should be kept in the bottom half. Black shade is the final shadow and should be kept in the lower quarter. Now the highlight is applied on the upper quarter using a one-to-one -one mix of khaki and bone white.
The leather straps are base coated with desert yellow. Metallic areas are based in gunmetal. Smoky ink is thinned one to one and applied over the metals. In total, three coats were applied allowing each coat to dry before applying the next.
The skulls are then based with Beastie Brown. After masking with Silly Putty, Filthy Brown is loaded into the airbrush for the first highlight. Bone White is used for the second highlight. Dead white is then used as the final highlight. Flesh tone shade is then used to shadow areas of the bone. We base the teeth with khaki. Then highlight with bone white. And finally, dead white. The ropes and his tongue are based with gory red. then highlighted with scarlet. Magic Blue is sponged onto the weapon and parts of the armor.
then a dry brush of silver over the metallic parts. Now we start doing edge highlights using pure white. A small brush is used, so to help the paint stay wet longer, I thin it two to one with water and then add a drop of drying retarder. Try to use the side of the brush when you can rather than the tip. It's good practice to try to make the lines as thin and as even as possible. You'll get better the more you do this. Now, we did edge highlighting, so why not do the opposite and black line the details? The mix is the same as white. I think this makes the model look really sharp and it looks different than a wash. The idea is the same as a wash, but more controlled. We want to exaggerate changes in the surface. It takes time and patience, so for an army, you might reserve this for your special characters.
then matte coat the model and you're done.